Okay, so in this video, we want to consider algebraic vectors. So, so far we've only considered vectors geometrically, and even though we were able to prove some pretty neat results, um, if we only stick with vectors purely from a geometric perspective, the train pretty much stops there. There's not much more that we can do, but things become very interesting if we throw in, with our notion of vectors geometrically, if we throw in there algebra. And then things become a lot more interesting, and you'll see, as we keep developing vectors, we'll keep our geometric notion and intuition of vectors, but as we add in more and more algebra, things will become more, more and more interesting, and we'll see that matrices will come back, determinants will come back, and all the things we've seen so far in the course that looked rather algebraically, gradually we'll extract from those objects the geometry. So let's go back to our discussion of the determinant. If you remember, we viewed at that point matrices as functions, and the idea was to view the xy plane not as tuples of real numbers, but as column matrices. So let's just go that over that topic, the idea of points in the plane or in three dimensions. And the first key concept is we can think of a point as a point, but also of a point as a vector, and that's a duality of points and vectors. So remember that R2 is just the xy plane, right? And you're used to seeing R2 as the set of tuples of real numbers, so x comma y, where x and y are arbitrary real numbers. Well, we can also view R2, if you remember, as no longer the set of tuples of real numbers, but as the set of column matrices. So the first entry is the x component of your point, the second entry is the y component, and once again, x and y can range over all real numbers. Recall that geometrically this changes absolutely nothing. The first entry of your tuple is the x component, the second entry is the y component, and the same goes for the column matrix. If you recall though, even though geometrically this changes nothing, algebraically this made a lot more sense because we were able to multiply our points by two by two matrices. So algebraically this is a much better presentation of the points in the xy plane in R2. For us though, in our next discussions, we'll use this form simply because it takes up a little less space than column matrices, and this will be more evident when we jump to, say, R3 now. So if R2 is a set of tuples of real numbers, R3 is, of course, a set of triples. So X, Y, Z, where X, Y, and Z can range over all real numbers. And you can think again of these as a set of points in three-dimensional space. This is your x-coordinate, your y-coordinate, and your z-coordinate. But once again, we can view R3 as a set of 3 by 1 column matrices. So R3 can be viewed as the set of all 3 by 1 column matrices. And again, geometrically, the two presentations are equivalent. The first entry is your x component, the second entry your y component, and the third entry your z component. Once again, though, algebraically, this makes a lot more sense. If you want to multiply the points in your space by a 3x3 three three matrix, here things work out and here things don't. But again, in this discussion, we will use this presentation because simply put, it takes less space. And if you think of it, and this is something we'll discuss later, but why stop at three components? Why not add a fourth component? Or why not add a fifth component? Or a sixth component? Why not add an arbitrary number of components? You'll see for a while we'll play only in R2 and in R3, but later on we'll ask, can we build the same tools and have the same ideas carry over higher dimensional spaces? And the answer will be yes. So this will be just an aside of things to come. But we can think of our n, where n is any positive integer, 
as the set of n tuples of real numbers. So you could think of it as x1 being your first component, x2 your second component, up to xn your nth component, where the xi's, so x1, x2, x3, up to xn, are arbitrary real numbers. And of course you can also view our n not as the set of n tuples of real numbers, but as the set of column matrices of length n. So you could view our n as the space of all column matrices with n components, where xi through xn can range over all real numbers. And once again, algebraically, this makes more sense, but geometrically, where they use this presentation for Rn, or this one, they are equivalent geometrically. But now, enough of Rn, let's just go to R2 and R3. The first key notion is the duality of points, which will then give us the concept of a vector algebraically. Let's consider a simple geometric vector in the xy plane. And you'll see then how points are points, but points are also vectors. So suppose we look in the xy plane. And the same discussion holds in three-dimensional space, the xyz space, and even in R3, R4, R5, and so on. Suppose we take the point, let's go with steps of 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, seven. And then we'll go up to say four, so one, two, three, four. Suppose we form a vector with the following two points. Suppose we take the point four, one. Let's call this point A. And suppose we take B to be the point seven, Let's go with 7 and 3 and call this point B. So we have points A and B. And just to remind ourselves of the coordinates of points A and B, A has coordinates for 1 and B has coordinates 7, 3. Well, with these two points, we can form a vector say the vector AB, starting from A and ending at B. So we have the vector now AB, which we can call vector U. The question is now, what we have so far is a geometric vector, right? A line segment connecting point A to point B in the direction from A to B. The question is, can we make sense of this object now algebraically. And the idea is, well, we know we can translate vectors anywhere in space, and the vector remains the same. As long as you keep the length and direction the same, the vector doesn't change. So the idea is, well, naturally, given any vector in space made up of two points, the initial and the terminal point, we can always translate the initial point of the vector wherever it may be, onto a very special point in the xy plane, and that being the origin. Well, so think of what will happen to your vector. Point A goes to the origin, so that means that we translate it by four units to the left, one unit down, and point B, if you translate by four units to the left, seven becomes three, and by one unit down, 3 becomes 2, and you get the point 3, 2. So you've translated both A and B by the same amount, by 4 units to the left, 1 unit down, and now you have the same vector. The length is the same, the direction is the same. This is still vector U. Now the idea is, how can we view the vector u purely algebraically. Well, think of it this way. Every time we translate our vectors, we'll always move the initial point onto the origin. So we can always drop this point and look at the coordinates of this point. 
they are 3, 2. And the question is, how can you obtain the point 3, 2 simply from the points A and B? Well, if you notice, translating by A, so 4 to the left, 1 to the uh, 1 down, is simply subtracting A, right? If you do A minus A, well, you get 4, 1 minus 4, 1, and this becomes the point 0, 0 which is the origin. So by doing A minus A, we've moved point A onto the origin. And of course, to preserve the vector, we have to translate B by the same amount. So we do B minus A. B is 7, 3, minus 4, 1, which gives you the point 3, 2, which is the end point of now vector U. So the idea is, we can now associate U with its terminal point, keeping in mind that the initial point is the origin. And this is our first time that we connect a vector with an actual point. The coordinates of this point will say are equal to the vector U. So we'll write U equals, quite simply, 3, 2. And that is the duality of point, because this looks like an apparent contradiction. You see, the vector u is a line segment in space that has not only length, but direction. And it looks like we are equating a, s a vector with a single point in the xy plane. Well, we can easily fix that if we think of the point no longer as just a point, but also as a vector. So think of drawing the same picture, but now I'll only draw this part of the picture. And this really is a simple but a fundamental notion, because points are two things at the same time. They're points, but they're also vectors. And the key is that you can choose to think of a point as a point if it is convenient, or you could choose to think of a point as a vector if that is convenient to you. Our point is 3, 2. So you say when you view 3, 2, naturally you can think of the position in space, 3 along the x-axis, 2 along the y-axis. So you can think of a point as a point. But, and this is where we fix this apparent paradox, you can now think of this point as a vector if you think of the point as being the terminal point of the vector whose initial point, aha, is the origin. And now if you view the point as the terminal point of a vector whose initial point is the origin, you have fixed the paradox, because the point now becomes a vector whose terminal point are the coordinates of this point, and whose initial point is the origin. So you see, you can think of 3, 2 as a single point in the plane, but also as an actual vector in the plane. So now this makes perfect sense. We think of vector u being the vector whose initial point is the origin and whose terminal point is the point 3, 2. And we call this the coordinates of vector u. And you can think, well, in general, how do we get the coordinates of a vector? Well, think of it. Vector u was simply given by a, b. So in general, if you have a geometric vector with initial point a and terminal point b, and you want its coordinates, well, think back to how did we get 3, 2? All we did to obtain 3, 2 was the terminal point of the vector minus the initial point. And if you do b minus a, you end up with the terminal point of the vector whose initial point is the origin, and the vector is exactly the same. But by doing b minus a, all you're doing is you're translating the vector a b so that its initial point becomes the origin. And this is how you turn a vector that is a geometric vector 
into an algebraic object, a single point, in the xy plane. And so b minus a will give you the coordinates of the vector a, b. So let's state our conclusion. And this really is the essence of points and their dual uh, property of being also vectors. If you want to view a, b as a, an algebraic object, all you have to do is terminal point minus initial point, b minus a, you will get now the coordinates of the terminal point of a vector whose initial point is the origin, but this is a simple translation by a, and so the vector is still the same. In our next video, we'll look at basic concepts of length of vectors, also the norm, and other concepts that we can now do algebraically with the coordinates of the vector. So always think back to, you can view the point 3, 2, or any other point in the plane for that matter, as a point in the plane, but you can also think of the point 3, 2 as a vector whose terminal point is 3, 2, and whose initial point is the origin.